and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is the last part of my Best Buddy series and in this video we're going to finish up the painting and add the final details. If you're following along traditionally with acrylics or oils, check out part one of this series for a list of all the traditional materials that I use including paint, canvases, and brushes. The app that we're going to be using is ArtRage for Android and here I want to go ahead and work a little bit more on the swing. And what I decided is that after looking at my photo reference it looks like they've actually drilled or screwed the links into the limb of the tree instead of wrapping the chains around it. So I want to kind of just give the indication that they've used um, two big uh, screws and put them into the, the limb of the tree here. And I also want to work a little bit more on the texture of the tree and I wanted to add a little bit of some lighter bark here and I'm sort of experimenting with the left the cap off um, brush that you can find in the markers category and I like it because it kind of gives a, a sort of a rough textury look and then you can go ahead and sort of smudge it in and make it blend in with the, the tree there and I'm using um, a cadmium orange color with white acrylic gesso to sort of get the highlight of the tree branch there and then here I just kinda I'm playing around with the settings on the smudge tool you can make them mimic a paint knife if you want to and just add paint there or you can just keep it as sort of a smudge brush and here I wanted to add just a little bit of some dark to the the tree here and you can use burnt umber if you're following along traditionally throw in some burnt sienna for some color variation on the tree like a little bit of a, a redder look here if you notice in the photo reference you can see there's a little bit of reddish bark look here and I'm saving this a lot because occasionally it will crash and I'm getting near the end of this picture and I want to keep things that I've done here instead of having to go back and redo them again so save frequently because occasionally art rage will collapse crash on you and then here I'm just going back and forth and adding real rough strokes to the bark of the tree and I'm still using the marker category for that but if you're following along with your acrylics you would use your number three round probably and just make real short dry brush strokes here and make them rough and uneven and blend with your finger or a paper towel and just kind of let some of the dark show through and just make it look like it's a, a real rough texture because that's what we're trying to do here is to get a, a impression of the bark of a tree and so that's kind of you want to make like little holes and maybe not holes kind of and and all the little things that make it look like it's tree bark and so I'm just kind of working with pockets of dark and light on this tree and smudging them out and going back over them with light color and dark color and that's what you have to do is just go back and forth and and try to get the contrast there and then at the bottom I'm trying to pull the grass up a little bit over the roots because you want sort of a you want it to look like it's sitting down into the grass and then here I decided that the swing was too high so I wanted to make it a little bit lower so I went ahead and erased the seat and added some more links and you can do this very easily if you have it on separate layers if you're following along traditionally you'll just have to mix some of the ground color and just cover it up and paint over it and so I went ahead and just kind of added the the dark for the seat again and then another highlight color here and just 
added the links to to the seed and just kind of giving it the impression of chain links and like I said before you don't have to make it great big detailed you just kind of want to add some circular looking strokes there to to give the impression of chains because it's kind of in the middle ground so it's not going to show up in big detail but we still want it to look like a tree swing and then here I'm shrinking it because I can tell what the painting looks like then and this is sort of equivalent to stepping back. When you're doing this traditionally, you want to step back from your picture and see how it looks. And so that's what I'm doing here. And then I'm working a little bit more on the tree trunk. And I decided I didn't want the trunk to look quite so wide. So I'm covering it up. I'm actually erasing it. But you can cover it up with some grass. If you're following along with traditional materials and I just wanted some indications of the tree roots going down into the grass and you just kind of leave it uneven and patchy right here and that gives it the impression of grass growing up around the bottom of the tree here. And once again I'm saving it because I'm getting to the point where everything that I do now sort of counts and and sort of counts towards what your final picture is going to look like and so I don't want to lose this so I'm saving frequently and again I'm working more on the tree bark and you can also use your dry clumps brush to give you the tree bark texture as well here and you just have to go look around your picture and see what you want to add and here I'm looking at the, the grass and I want to add some details to the grass. And so what I'm doing is getting a very small width on my brush. And you can use the dry clumps brush and just make a circular motion and make real thin strands of grass. And so I'm using the darker colors against the light and lighter colors against the dark. And you just kind of want to use sort of a a small circular motion to make these grass strands and if you're following along with your acrylics or your oils what you're going to do is make your paint mixture very thin and use your long script brush and just roll it into your paint till you get a real thin point and it's almost like an ink like consistency with your paint and then you'll just go ahead and use the same kind of stroke of a circular motion with your hand and it works with your stylus and it works with the brush so that part is the same as dig in digital painting as it is in traditional painting you just want sort of a circular stroke to make the grass look like there's more detail to it and then here I'm just kind of working on her foot a little adding a little bit more detail to it darkening the toes a little bit and just kind of making it look like it's um, sort of in the shadow but we just wanted to add a little bit more detail to it and you just kind of go and look around your picture and see what all you want to add to it and then what I saved for last was doing the leaves of the trees and so here I'm using the tiny daubs brush in Art Rage and it works really well for getting a, a sort of a leafy texture look. And if you're following along with your acrylics or oils, what you would use is a bristle brush, your number eight bristle brush, and just kind of daub it in, in the corners and in the places where you want bigger clusters of leaves. And then on the edge, you would use your number three round or your short script brush just to give kind of a indication of <clears throat> leaves on the end of the clumps and so you would make really tiny daubs with your regular brush as well you'd make this little short short stroke and really irregular and you, you don't want it to look like dots or anything you want short strokes kind of like commas but Make sure that you vary them. Don't make them look all the same. And then you want to go ahead and use 
light on dark and dark on light so what you would do is get some hooker's green mixture and throw in some dioxazine purple and throw in a little bit of white acrylic gesso you just want darker clumps for your leaves there and you want those mostly in the corner of your painting because you want to make eye stoppers and eye stoppers just means that it keeps the viewer's eye on your painting and and doesn't keep it wandering off the edge of the canvas keeps it from wandering off the edge of the canvas and so here I'm just working on the other side here and I'm adding different variations of the color on the leaves we're adding dark greens we're adding middle greens and then we're adding almost yellow phthalo yellow green because those will be the highlights and those will be where the sunlight is hitting on the edges of the leaves and on the clumps around the edges of the clumps of the leaves here and so you would throw in purples for the dark shadowy parts of the leaves and and then you would on the edges of it use sort of the phthalo yellow green color or even cadmium yellow light with uh, a little bit of white thrown in we just kind of want to get the impression that the sunlight is hitting on the edges of the trees and so you're going to have pockets of dark and light under your tree as well and so here I'm just continuing to use the tiny Dobbs brush and art rage and in some places it's thicker and in some places it's thinner and you might even let some of the background show through because you want to make it look just like it's clumps of leaves in places and it's thinner in others and it also shows that the leaves are hanging off of different branches and so just remember to do that don't make it all round make it make it look uneven and then here I'm just adding some of the branches to the the and it looks like the branches are coming into the picture and and they're kind of uneven and crooked you don't want them real straight because in your photo reference the branches are really uneven and crooked too and that just adds more interest to your painting and you can use your long script brush for this if you're falling along traditionally and use sort of a burnt umber or burnt sienna color here and then you kind of cover up some of the branches with some of your leaf color again and you can uh, use your hooker's green for that just use some of the darker colors and just kind of go over the branches a little bit cover them up but don't cover them completely up because we want to be able to see that there's actual crooked branches hanging down and that just gives it more interest to the tree and just makes it look like a, a really old tree and then here I'm just adding a little bit more of the light color along the edges to make it look like sunlight shining through there and you kind of want to match it up with the patches of the grass on the ground just kind of put uh, lighter leaves above that maybe and that just kind of gives more indication of light shining through the leaves and then here I'm adding a little bit more of a bright spot in the grass working a little bit on the little girl's hand just kind of refining the look of the hand and adding a little bit of some shadow there like she's uh, clutching it really hard and then I'm going ahead and signing the picture and calling it done. So this is the end of my Best Buddy series. Stay tuned for a brand new series and hit the subscribe button if you want to see what I do next. Thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below. If you have any suggestions about what you want to see next, just leave it in the comments below and I will catch you later.